What's up, YouTube? Eugene here, joined by my fellow perfume snob, Christo. Good to have you back. I'm glad you're here for this. Good to be back. Hope you're well. We're going to be looking at the House of Lartisan Parfumer, and uh, we'll discuss the bottles that we do have. We don't have a whole lot of bottles, but it's just the house that I've recently got to know, I guess, from chasing all my Chanel and Guerlain and... Um, Dior and all that other stuff. I've left everything to the wayside. You're a little bit more familiar with Lartisan than I am. Um, one of the older niche brands out there, really, yeah. and, and not one that gets a lot of attention or notice with this new age of niche out there, which is unfortunate because I think they are a great, a fantastic brand. Um, like I said, one of the older niche brands way before, uh, you know, Tom Ford, Killian, Frederick Mull, Le Labo, mm -hmm. uh, MFK were, were around, you know, there was pretty much Diptyque and, and Lartisan Perfumer. Yeah. They go back to the 70s. And almost what I'd say is like uh, the blueprint for Frederick Mull in a sense, you know, they used a lot of different world-class perfumers. They didn't put paste the um, perfumers names on the bottles but mm -hmm. you know they used uh, fantastic perfumers Bertrand Duchefort, Jean-Claude Elena, Olivia Giacobetti those are the three most prominent that I'm aware of mm -hmm. but um, hadn't thought about it that way but yeah no for sure that makes sense they're doing a lot of creations with a lot of different you know world-class master perfumers um, but yeah they don't quite openly advertise who does what and they'll have one person do the original someone do the flanker blah 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 you know which you know we'll we'll kind of talk about i was searching their website a, a few days back and i did notice that on the lardisan official website they do mention the name of the perfumer for some okay. of these yeah so i thought that was really cool mm -hmm. so when you hear the name or the brand lardisan perfumer what what kind of things come to your mind what do you associate lardisan with now unfortunately sephora damn um, okay okay I, are they available in sephora very readily very readily. i did not know that yeah um, i've never seen that okay maybe they've been taken out but i remember when you know, I know Serge Luton's is available in Sephora, and I'd almost place them at, you know, a Serge, like old school Serge Luton's and old school Lardisan in the same category. So when we, I know for a fact, since we started hanging out after I moved back to Canada, Lardisan has been introduced to Sephora. Whether they're still there, I don't know. Um, they could have been taken out. I honestly don't go into Sephora very much anymore, especially to the perfume but they were available at sephora for several years um and that's when they changed over to the gray bottle so how long ago was that i don't remember three uh, years ago maybe yeah, about that three or four years ago yeah so i know that i i'm quite certain in canada at least that serge uh sorry that lardison changed over to the gray bottles while they were in sephora what do you think about the gray bottles don't like them at all no personality really dull and boring right i think they lost i don't not sure why they went that that yeah. route but i much prefer the colorful labels i think these bottles are pretty they're pretty bad in I, general but really i yeah. like them i like the bottles. i especially don't like the caps really i don't like the shape how many sides are here eight seven seven One, seven seven that's weird. Seven I never sides. noticed that. I actually never noticed. I don't know. And they just kind of feel weird in hand. They fit, but I was never a fan of the packaging. Really, I like them. I like the bottles. I actually, I really dislike the old bottles with the kind of rounded cap. Right. The rounded top on the cap. I totally admit that. But I, I like these. I like them. I don't know. Really nice, heavy cap on them. I don't know if the new ones are. I think that these are much better than, than what they have now. The gray ones, they're really dull and they look kind of boring and plain and no mm -hmm. character. But let's go through some of these. Yeah. Let's start. Which one would you like to start with? You know what? Let's do... Um, hmm. Okay, let's do the... Well, yeah. Tim let's Buck do two. that. Yeah, this we, is one of the more popular ones. Tim yeah. Buck two. And we both tried it. We're both pretty familiar with it. Now we got to deal with that train. There you go. It 
It's very green. Green, earthy, mildly incense-y. And I say incense and, you like know... Smoky incense? Yeah. To, I like it. To me, it's I, I get a very dominant fruity note. Yeah, what is it? It's meant to mango. be mango? Yeah, yeah, there's meant to be mango in that. I can't say I pick up mango per se. It's almost like mango skin, too. It's not overly yeah, sweet. Yeah, it's not pulp. It's not like mango pulp, which is very mango sweet, juice. sticky. Yeah. Very, like, mango pulp is very textured. Do you like it? I do. I like it a lot. I used to have one of those, like, rounded cap bottles, and I sold it, and I really regret it. Really? Yeah, very much so. Okay. Um, so and I've kind of always wanted to pick up a bottle of it, but I just, like, you know, the newer bottle, but it just never comes to fruition for some reason. So these have been out of production for, you said, three years, but I think quite a while. You know, there's still, some are still easily to come by. Well, I think some, it's because they were so mass-produced for a mass-produced market, yeah. But some are true. harder than others. Like, I'd really like to get tea for two. I like that composition, that smoky, uh, spicy woodiness, but it's just so hard to come, come by. Yeah. Let's, let's do this. Okay. Have you smelt this? That's zing. I smelled that with you when you said it was like trash or something. I didn't say it was trash. I said it was like, I got a sample from Lucky Scent and it was just like nothing on my skin. Mm. It's like one of those point sevens, and it was like so underwhelming. I almost feel like the sample had gone bad. Right. They just filled it with water. Yeah, yeah. That's not that's... what this sample was. Or, or maybe it's just like, you know, if you did kind of put that in a tiny, tiny little, uh, you know, dab splash uh, vial, you know, it wouldn't translate well. But very different, very, very different than I recall. Do you find it pissy or shitty? To me, it's very fecal and pissy. Man. Like... It, wow, this is weird because it, it took me a second to kind of pinpoint what it was, but it almost reminds me of the scent when you open like a brand new bottle of Tylenol or something. Hmm. I don't know, man. That's it, it took me a second to picture what it was, but there's something about, you know, opening up a smell of like you know right medicine or tablets or something i don't know what, what it is get. yeah there's something in there maybe it's you don't get anything like um, um there's something anime like no question uh, yeah i don't know it's to just me it's very animal like musky leathery animal a little bit of sweetness <sighs> something like, on that zing was supposed to replicate an experience at was it the yeah, zoo or the, the circus, circus or the something? Circus, I think. And I get a lot of those animal notes. Like, something in that I don't know, it reminds me opening up a bottle of like, like you know, white pills, like white tablets. <laughs> Man, I don't know what, what it is. Taking I don't a know. shit in there too. No, no, no. I don't know, but it, it, that's what it, I don't know why it reminds me of that. Like it, there is. And you know, animalic aspect to it's it. It's almost challenging. Really? Ah, hmm. Interesting. All right. Mon numero dies. Let's say for consistency. What does that mean? Mon, my number. My 10? number ten. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not familiar with this at all. But oh. you do have a bottle there. That. You, so this is my bottle. Eugene actually. I just has actually one. picked one. I haven't even opened it yet. Oh but. fuck! I love this stuff, man. Oh. I love it. Incensey. Yeah. Spice, like pencil shaving. Is right. mini incense. Yeah, yeah, it's like is there anise in here? Um, I don't know, to be honest. It's like anise on top of pencil shavings or some kind of spice. It almost feels like Coca Cola fizz. Hmm. Do you get Coca Cola like 
pencil shavings dipped inside of a Coca-Cola, a freshly opened Coke. I get the Coca-Cola thing for sure. I think that is kind of like some sparkly resins is in there. Is it like or root beer or, or ginger maybe? Resins mixed with the cinnamon. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah, I get that. I like it a lot, and I, I've put a pretty big dent in this. Like, I wore this very regularly over the the winter months. I, I bought this blind, and now that I'm, I'm glad that I have, because mm. I like this. I think I could get some use out of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's fantastic. I really enjoy it a lot. All right, let's move on. And okay. here's another one that I had okay. picked up. And this is Zonka, and I've heard a lot of good things about this. And I kind of went into my Lardizan interest really blindly because I haven't had a chance to try a lot of these. And I don't want to be buying them just for the sake of collect. I'm not going to collect Lardizan, but I will buy the ones that I think are mm -hmm. more interesting. I don't want to go and buy the whole line, but this is one where I had read the reviews and thought, okay, it's probably one of the better ones. Very big cult following. And you have a bottle of this over there as well. Ooh. It's like... It's it's industrial to me. Hmm. Green, watery. Green and watery. Spicy. Spicy, yeah. Dry. Um, I have to say I don't love it as much as the kind of cult following that it has. Um, so, Paulo, our mutual friend... It's almost metallic. I think he recommended that I take it because I got this from uh, Anthony, a, you know, our mutual friend, for a very good price. And um, Paulo was like, yeah, I think I mentioned in a video that I was getting it or waiting for it. And he's like, oh, you'll like it. And it's, it's like really sharp and strong. Spicy. I like it. I don't know if I love it, but I like it. It's interesting. But I definitely don't love it as much as the kind of cult following that it has. This that reminds sense. me of one of those diptyques. And it's the Iris leather one. Iris leather diptyque? The one they discontinued. Jeez, I don't know. What is that? Fuck me, dead. <laughs> um, I forgot the name now. Volutes. The That's discontinued. Volutes. It's it's boutique exclusive. Oh, I liked Volutes. And this is what that reminds me of. See, I don't really get Volutes out of it, because I like Volutes. And I struggled with Volutes. Really? Very much, yeah. There, I think it was a honey, it was a honeyed iris. Yeah, that, yeah. So there's, really I know there's... turned my stomach. One is, so there was Volutes, there were two sweet ones. One was honey and tobacco or something, and one was... That was Volutes. Was, that's Volutes. Okay. Then there was the, the vanilla one. Oh, dwell. Yes. Yes. So I had picked this one up Interesting. Too, I didn't... Right off the card, I'm not sure. It's interesting, but I'm not sure that I love it. And you're right, there is a cult following for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's, you know, pretty much exactly what I said. And I've worn it a few times. I'm not convinced, but I'm definitely not, you know, I don't hate it. So how do you say this? I say Trevor C. Du Beausfort, but I don't know shit about anything. Do you know what the background story is on yeah, this? Yeah, the the, um, the Beausfort is a river in Turkey that, like, separates... Oh, man, I'm going to be so wrong here, but it, like, separates European Turkey to, like, Asian Turkey or something like that. I think it runs through um, Istanbul. Again, I, I apologize to anyone Turkish or anyone with any knowledge of Turkish history, but, yeah. Okay. It's definitely... Okay, so it's meant to smell like Turkish delight. And, dude, I love this stuff. I shouldn't, on paper, I should hate and detest this. Because it's sweet. But I fucking love it. I can it. see it's sweet with some a lot Ugh. of depth to it. Ugh. I can see that. Like, I actually think this is better than the Serge Luton's, um, what is it? What's the Serge Luton's, uh... Arabi? No, 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 no. The, um... Sultan? The, uh, Turkish Delight. No, it's, um, Rak Rakat Lukum. So again, it's very dry. Oh man, I love this. Very powdery, very, very. Just like, have you ever had Turkish some kind delight? Of florals in here. 
like real, real. No, I don't no, mean I like Turkish have, delight, like the chocolate Canadian bar. Canadian Turk, yeah, Turkish. Yeah, that stuff's garbage. No, uh, and it's so it's so it's basically like these little, um, I don't know, jelly gelatin squares that powdery, are covered right? in yeah. yeah confectionery sugar, and yeah, it. Oh, I can't God. say that I love it. I do. I like. Yeah, this is. I bought this new. To be fair, I probably bought it six or seven years ago, but I bought this. I love this. Like, this is a... Um, I, I of, can't even say I can pick up any kind of so accord or... The only accords that I get are kind of like sweetness, like some fruitiness. Here. Yeah, uh, powderiness. That's kind of all I get. Maybe a touch leathery. I think there's actually leather in it as well. I love it, but it's one of those things I think that's just so well done you can't so you love it i love like genuinely a one of the best winter fragrances i have in my collection yeah all right all right cool which let's see which one you grab next i'm just going in order here and this is low de ombre extreme and i know this is a jean claude elena yeah so you are actually picking up another one of my all-time winter fragrances yeah i remember you telling me this just Man. Very interesting. And again, I can't make out a whole lot from this. It's dry. Mm. Oh, I can already smell it over here. It's it it remind it definitely I've smelt this before somewhere. Like from Elena or just somewhere? But do you have... Oh, no, you don't. This isn't a typical Jean-Claude Elena. No. Dry cedar, spices. But there's something predominant in here, like a note that's just... Like his spice medley? Like Paprika Brazil or... No? If I went through his catalog, it would hit me. Right. Remind me. Remind me, what is this? What do you mean? Like what? Oh, the I... notes. Yeah, nutmeg, um, amber, of course, um, and just tons and tons and tons of spice. But nutmeg is like There's the one note that I that's get. That's like it's like Jean Claude Elena, and it's like fucking pulling me by the tongue. Oh man. Ah, oh, it's just like tree bark. I'm just like oh, my... cinnamon like cinnamon is tree bark oh I love that like genuinely I think that's one of the best oh man is there leather in here I don't recall I don't recall I don't think there is but I could be wrong I know I've smelt this somewhere before yeah I've let you try it like I've brought it before no I mean like in one of his, his in a composition I think you know and that's paprika Brazil might be a bit of a stretch, but I've smelled... Paprika Brazil to me is dominantly iris. What? Yeah. I get so much spice in that. Like, just spice and spice and spice. Wow. Okay. It's, it's coming to me. It's slowly... I'm going to come back to this. Yeah, do it, do it, do it. Go on. I'm going to come back to I that. love it. Like, genuinely, I think that's one of the best. All right, here's another Jean-Claude Elena. And that's Bois Farine. I tried this before. And this is very untypical, Jean-Claude. Yeah, that peanut note that you mentioned before. It's like fried bread or like fried buttery yeah. bread. Or it, it, it reminds me of the way a room would smell after bread has been fried, like deep fried. Yeah, and that note, like even the peanut note is almost already gone. Like the smell of peanut oil. Yeah, I've been making a lot of pizza at home. Where you have to get out the flour and put the dough in it and stuff and like roll it out. And it reminds me a lot of that. Like making peanut pizza or something ridiculous like that. Yeah, I've tried this before and I remember like... It's so strange. It's very strange. I don't know if I could wear that, especially at work, but I do really enjoy it. It's very dry. and It's, it's very strange. You know, it reminds me of 
flour, baking flour, and it's like almost like if you had a mouthful of baking flour, and it was like. Did you ever see Jackass where they do the antiquing? And nope. the dudes fall asleep and they just put their hand, like they take a handful of baking powder <laughs> and just throw it in their, yeah, or baking flour like and throw it in their face and they like wake up with it in their mouth and eyes and nose. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think I could wear this. I really don't think I could. But I like it. That's unique. Velour de Roses. And I know you've had this for a very long time. Yeah, and I've dec I, I probably have about 20 mil of that at home in my closet in um, decants as well. So I'm gonna take it, you really like this. I really like it a lot, and I'm just smelling it now for the, because I haven't worn it in a long time, just. Oh. This is like fermenting grapes. Grapes, hmm. Or like, yeah, when you're making wine, I get a lot of that for very sharp fermentation. So it is, you know, obviously rose it's in very there. very pungent and There's spicy. There's plum. plum. Yeah. Spicy. What? Oh, yeah. Wow. What are you talking about? See, I get the prickliness of the patchouli in there. I don't know about spice. Maybe, but I don't get any specific spice. You know what I mean? I wouldn't say I get So cardamom. you know this a lot better than I do and off- the top mm -hmm. i can't say i can even notice patchouli what no. what are you even talking about it's so abrasive it's like a scouring pad it's like a scouring <laughs> pad made yeah. of patchouli no i don't know wow. all i get is like fermenting wine dregs it's very sharp yeah like you said it is sharp very prickly. sharp and heady Prickly. So Man, I get so much patchouli let's, out of let's that. Let's do a uh, patchouli patch. Yeah. Have you ever smelt this? Uh, briefly, a long time ago. This was actually when I started to get into patchouli. I was just getting into Lardisan as well. And this was like really high on my radar. But I never ended up buying a bottle. And I just, you know, at that time and point, and I still have not. I remember liking it. Okay, so as I recall, there was patchouli, but there was also vanilla, and I'm going to say there was um, amber in there. But I remember it having sweetness in it. In here? Yeah. Maybe not the amber, but I believe, I remember there being a sweetness to it. What's up? It's got right. Is that like Chinese writing? Yeah, or? it's definitely um, Eastern Asian writing. Not sweet right now, at least. It's very sharp. See, I get a lot. I find... Yeah, man, I find those to be really similar now. Ooh, wow. Try it next to it's the... It's almost volume. like... Cocoa powdery patchouli. It's definitely scratchy. It's like that sandpaper patchouli. Oily, very oily. Mm. So I hate paper. But it, it seems very linear, this one. Okay, so, you know, maybe it's a good time to bring that up now. The, the nearing 24 minute mark i know a lot of people say lardison is transparent and linear i love transparent i'm not crazy about linear I linear like i can give or take i don't don't really care i love complexity and i love like a jean claude elena transparent with complexity right uh we got one more al oud and this looks like the older style packaging Oh, as in not the, the... It was the packaging, I think, before this. Oh. Because there's several different bottles of this. Okay. I'm not this sure This has, like, that. like, the Middle Eastern Arabic design there. So I have tried this, and I did have a sample for a little while. Yeah, older bottle. See that? How it's different? Oh, is that? Okay. I didn't realize that. 
So I've tried this. I do like it. Um, I've never purchased a bottle, but it's something that maybe if I had a better opportunity, I'd wear it more. It's like turpentine. Spicy turpentine. Yeah, that kind of fermented date. Is it date or fig in here? I don't know. No, it's got to be date. It almost feels like a rose oud to Middle me. Middle Eastern isn't... Is, is there fig. rose in, in, in al oud? Most, most oud's have rose or at least a, a drop. But yeah, quite a sharp it's rose, very right? very spicy. Like dry, almost like the cumin cardamom spices. Mm -hmm. Very dry, cedary. Again, I think I get like pencil shavings from this. Yeah, I like it. It's I, I can't say it's exactly as I recall it to be, but I, I do like it. I like it as well, and I don't find it overly oody, and I find it... No. I actually like this better than most Western ouds. This is more spice to me, spice and dry woods. I like this as well. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. I think that's everything. It is, I believe. I want to go back to go. Uh, which one? Low the ombre extreme. Do you just? Do you have your yours? phone here somewhere? Yeah. Can you call it up? Yeah. Comparisons. I'm. I'm. I'm obsessed now. does remind me of something that there's yeah just the original and then there's an histoire de parfum that's not made by jean claude elena there's uh what is that aaron aaron and then a carner barcelona let me have a look at the notes really quick Amber, balsamic, vanilla, orange, spicy, powdery. I don't really get a heck of a lot of uh, vanilla, but I can see a lot of that. Play-Doh? They're comparing it to Play-Doh. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't. It's warm and balmy. Earthy, rooty. It reminds me of something. I just can't place it right now. Like an gonna, Elena creation? Yeah, it's going to drive me nuts. Here, I don't then, see anything here, wait, there wait, that wait. Just let me pull up Elena then. Almost something leather. I like this a lot, and that's why it's bothering here, me. Here, skim through. No, I love it. I genuinely, truly, and genuinely love it. I love Trevor C. de Beausfort, but, you know, to be honest, not to take away from it, but... Um, There's got to be a huge patchouli note in here. Um, you know, Turkish Delight fragrances are pretty common. Whereas this, I've never smelled anything like this other than, of course, the original. Oh, that's awesome. I can't place it. No, I don't know, man. But I know I like it. And it seems a lot more denser than, than what Elena's yes, known for. Yes, 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 yes. It doesn't feel like it's that lightweight, ethereal... That's why I was really surprised that it was him. Um, this uh, is going to drive me nuts. When I first realized that he made it, I was like, wow, I didn't know that he made this because it's not him. All right, if you know what I'm smelling, let us know. I'd love to know. Yeah, we're so inept we don't even know what we're smelling. <laughs> no. At this point, it doesn't matter anymore, but I know I like it. Yeah, it's awesome. I thought you'd like that one. I thought you'd like Traverse a little more because you're into the powder, but... The ones that stood out for me... Okay, Loda Ombre stood out. Um, Which one? I like Mol Numero 10, surprisingly. Yeah, I like that a lot. I think it's kind of like a refined bro scent. Is that what it is? I think so. To me, that's what it... So, someone said that it smells like a niche version of Spice Bomb, and I kind of just went like... Hmm shit and that. then i got Did it in the that? mail no i didn't and then yeah, i got it in the mail hearing that is like fucking heart-wrenching exactly know? but i got it in the mail i was like you know what even if it does this smells awesome and i wore the hell out of it i like velour de roses mm -hmm. 
I wasn't obsessed with Zonka. Yeah, yeah, same right with me, man. Bat. I agree. Pretty much similar, similar. Uh, um, I think yeah, I really, really like Lo de Ombre. And if I could find a bottle of an older bottle of tea for two and an older bottle of. This is really hard to come by right now. Really? The old bottles of Lo de Ombre Extreme. Man, I didn't know that. And I don't know how it compares to the regular Lo de Ombre, but. Yeah. Let's chop this off at the knees. We're yeah. getting uh, quite tall as it is. Anyway, guys. Leave a comment down below. What do we need to smell from Lars? And there's so many other offerings. You know, this is basically what I've gotten to smell. Let us know. Give it a year we'll, and we'll have 15 more. Yeah, probably. Or the whole collection. That's just how it works. Let us know what it, what's a must-have, what's a must-smell. Um, drop a comment of, I don't know, whatever you want to say. We'll see you soon.